Hi, I'm Matt Harrison, president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. The big thing I want to leave with you this month in this News Digest is that this coming year, we're going to have some 40 missionaries from overseas coming home on furlough. That means they're home for a time, they'll be visiting their donors, getting some rest and relaxation before they head back to their very challenging tasks all over the world. We listen to you and over several years we greatly increased the number of missionaries. That missionary support has been great. Over 2,000 congregations out of 6,000 are directly supporting a missionary through us. But we need support for the system of keeping the missionaries in the field, providing them the support they need, the assistance they need from St. Louis, and taking care of them. I know you care about getting the gospel out around the world, and we do too. Please support us every way you possibly can at lcms.org. We had a great life march this year. It was fantastic. It was the best I'd been to so far. It was very optimistic. And one thing we did was we sang hymns, especially parts of the liturgy, the Te Deum, the Lord's Prayer, and everybody knew the Lutherans. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod was there. I really hope you have a chance to join us next year. Every other year, we have a great conference on life issues, and we had another one this time. It was fantastic. This month, we have the Journal of Lutheran Mission. It's another big demographics issue, and as I talk to you, I think 10 or 15,000 people have already downloaded its content. It's another very significant article written by a demographer. We've had several demographers take a hard look at the Missouri Synod and its 45 plus year decline to give us insight. Now, I do not think that our uh, habits of family size are going to remarkably or miraculously change anytime soon. Although that is no doubt far and away, as these studies show, the major cause for our overall decline. What I do believe is that the Bible says a lot about families and children and maybe we should look at it, number one, but especially we need to look at evangelism and outreach and revitalization of congregations and church planting. Lutherans Engage has a great issue this time around. It's all about a mission start in Belize where there have not been any Lutherans. We're delighted to get that going with LCMS missionaries. Before I go, I'd like to share with you something from Dr. Walther's Pastoral Theology. This is just out from Concordia Publishing House. Christian Twos translated it and it's available in English for the first time. It's Dr. Walther's treatment of all those things that have to do with being a pastor, from studying to be a pastor, the call into the ministry, all the way through retirement. And he has a great passage from Dr. Luther. Now we hear that even two or three assembled in Christ's name have the same power as St. Peter and all the apostles. For the Lord himself is there, as he says in John 14, this is how it has happened that a person who believed in Christ has often resisted a whole crowd. In short, God will not be bound by numbers, greatness, importance, power, or whatever is personal in people, but rather wants to be only with those who love and keep his word, even if they should be mere stable boys. What does he care about high, great, powerful lords? He alone is the highest, greatest, and mightiest. For we have here the Lord himself over all angels and creatures who says, they shall all have the same power, keys, and office, even two simple Christians assembled only in his name. And so it is, by virtue of Christ and his priesthood, you are spiritual priests. And no matter how large or small your congregation, Christ is in your midst, and you have called a pastor to care for you with the gospel. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you in every way as you serve him and love one another. God bless.